Howdy! My name is Daniel Farias. And I'm Alan Hamilton. We will be presenting for Math 442, the Lorenzo Tractor. In this video, we'll discuss the origins of the Lorenzo Tractor, its significance and applications to the real world. Edward Lorenz, born in West Hartford, Connecticut, served as a weather forecaster for the Army Air Corps during World War II, after which he decided to pursue meteorology at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where upon graduation, his research into atmospheric behavior led him to question the appropriateness of the, of the linear models available at the time. As he studied, he began to realize that weather patterns did not always change as predicted, this realization prompted Lorenz to derive from the Navier-Stokes equations for fluids a highly simplified system of nonlinear differential equations, which we now know as the Lorenz Attractor. Now that we've introduced the Lorenz Attractor, we will discuss the concepts which define it. Was that system changing over time? Yes, that's because it's an example of a dynamic system. I heard the Lorenz Attractor is also a dynamic system. Is that true? That is correct. Did you know that at any given time, this entire system can be described completely by numbers? So does that mean that I can use those numbers to model real world applications? Seen the weather lately? A dynamical system may be described simply as any system that changes over time. The system may be described at any instant by a set of numbers known as a state vector. The system's behavior as it evolves is governed by a rule or function. Based on the initial state vector, the function may be used to determine the state of the system at subsequent instants in time. This quantitative approach to describing the state of a system is very useful as it allows the behavior of many physical occurrences to be represented mathematically. As mentioned before, dynamical systems change over time. To describe the long-term tendencies of dynamical systems, we use a set known as an attractor. An attractor causes points which approach it to remain close as time elapses and less affected by some external force. It is logical that, over time, systems tend to settle in a particular state, as most systems in nature seek equilibrium. Consider a ball coming to rest at the bottom of a bowl or chemical elements forming ionic bonds to fill valence shells. See this penny in the basin. As soon as the penny is released, we know it will be drawn toward the hole in the center, excluding any external forces. This is, in essence, what an attractor is. All objects which enter the system will tend to this point as time elapses. In the penny example, the attractor is governed by its geometric shape, a basin, and will tend towards the hole every time no matter where the penny is placed in the system. However, in some cases, the geometry of the system's behavior is not so straightforward. In fact, it may even have a non-integer dimension. David Ruel and Floris Takens referred to these instances as strange attractors. With strange attractors, there is no fixed geometric shape which defines the behavior. Thus, determining the final trajectory of an object in the system gives only an approximation at best. Not only are strange attractors interesting mathematical concepts, they also make very fascinating visuals.
Friends Attractor is only one case of strange attractors. However, it has some very interesting characteristics. To start off, x, y, and z in the Lorenz equations are not references to spatial coordinates, but specific thermal variables. As such, there are three different field-related constants that define the Lorenz system. The first, sigma, is known as the Prandtl number and is the ratio of fluid viscosity to thermal conductivity. Beta, represented by the B-looking symbol, is the width-to-height ratio of the system. And finally, rho, in this scenario, a reference to the Rayleigh number, represents the difference in temperature between the top and bottom of the system. When the constants within Lorenz's equations are set to certain values, in this case, with sigma equal to 10, beta equal to 8 thirds, and rho greater than 24.28, the system exhibits chaotic behavior. Systems which exhibit chaotic behavior are highly sensitive to initial conditions. We see in this example 5,000 points. Each starting position is the initial condition associated with each point. Notice that while some points start very close to each other, they take very different paths. Over time, we see the points converge to a particular strange geometry. Its striking resemblance to butterfly wings has led to chaotic behavior taking the title the butterfly effect. Butterfly effect, a fundamental principle of chaos theory, states that in any chaotic system, there is an extreme sensitivity on initial conditions. Here, we see graphs of two Lorenz systems. The first has an initial condition of 1, negative 1, 1. The second has initial conditions of 1.0000000. Which is to say, these two are virtually identical and differ only by one ten millionth of a decimal point. Looking closely, the two graphs look virtually identical. Let's take a look at these two from a couple of other viewpoints. In the y versus x plane, still pretty similar. In the z versus y plane, they're still looking pretty similar. And finally, in the z versus x plane, they still appear the same. As you can see, in all of these graphs, it is virtually impossible to tell if these two functions are different at all. Now, we're going to show you the butterfly effect. Take a look at the following graphs. If you'll zoom in to the t equals 30 second point, you'll see that the two functions were indeed identical to a point. Right after 30 seconds, we see a wild divergence not only in the one initial condition that was different, but in all three. Further, the variations are wild and don't follow any discernible patterns. This one ten millionth of a variation in one single condition produced two radically different functions after a short time. This is the butterfly effect. Now that you have seen the butterfly effect, it is easy to understand why predicting the weather is an inexact science. Since our measurement devices only have finite precision, it is impossible to know the exact initial conditions of any specific system. Thus, our recommendation is stick to the hourly weather forecast. Look more than a few days ahead of time and you're bound to get rained on. This is Alan Hamilton. And I'm Daniel Fadias. Have, Have a good, good break, break, Matt442. Boom! <laughs>